this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're only half an hour away from the end of the show. We're getting there. And here to help us get through this last 30 minutes of this of the Red Green Show is, uh, well, is the star of the Red Green Show, my uncle. And, and well, it's his own show. That's why it's named the Red Green Show. And he hired me. That's, that's pretty much why it's called his show, because otherwise we'd call it like Wilder Life or something like that. But like, you have to stick to the Red Green Show. Here he is, Red Green. Thank you, Harold, and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't been turned off to, uh, by now, you're probably going to be able to tough it through till the end of the show. Uh, God, we had a heck of a time up the lodge uh, this week. Uh, Moose Thompson uh, uh, won one of them home barber kits uh, at the bingo, and he wanted to give everybody a free haircut. So, God, we had a heck of a lot of fun with that. Uh, old man Sedgwick ended up losing an ear, you know. But no big deal, he doesn't use them. Anyway, you know. And uh, Moose Thompson said that he was only following orders. How was he supposed to know that a little off the side only meant hair? <laughs> and speaking a little off the side, uh, come on over here, Harold. Uh, Harold is the uh, producer and uh, director of the show and the announcer, as you maybe heard, if, unless you were lucky enough not to be listening. And uh, he has a piece of equipment here that enables him to move us into the next segment, you know, if things are boring or not moving fast enough. Just, he just hits some buttons there and... Oh, for God's sakes, Harold, I, I, I put us into the next segment by mistake. Uh, just get us back here and let me finish the story. Oh, no, that's, that's okay. Hey, Harold, I want to I finish the story here. I'll get it back. Don't touch it! <laughs> Sleep through the night, up with the sun. Snorf down a coffee and reach for my gun. <laughs> down to the forest where all the birds fly. I blow them and blast them right out of the sky. <laughs> Smell the gunpowder, hear the shots ring. When the ducks start falling, it'll make your heart sing. <laughs> Hunting is heaven, it's a sport for real men. And as soon as my wound heals, I'll go hunting again. <laughs> this week uh, in the Handyman Corner, uh, we're going to show you how to make it a lot safer to drive at night. Step number one is you throw old man Sedgwick's truck keys into the lake. <laughs> Step two, you go around the front of your vehicle and you count the number of headlights. I come up with uh, the number two, not one of my favorites. I much prefer the number 10. All right, now we've got the headlights all attached with the uh, handyman secret weapon duct tape. Strong and yet flexible enough that you can adjust the headlights uh, even after they're in position. So I can have two facing left, a couple up, a couple down, a couple to the right, and the other one's just to kind of fill in. I'm going to see anything on the road uh, in front of me with a rig like this. And even if uh, one or two of them are burned out, uh, still no real big problem. Now, uh, obviously, uh, it's going to take a little extra power to uh, run a system like this. So what I do is I run a ba battery cable, jumper type cable, battery cables uh, back to the back. I don't have one long enough, so I, I hook two together. And that's, as long as it's outside the car, I think that's safe enough. Uh, I take them right through the windshield, uh, or where the windshield used to be, uh, <laughs> into the back seat area. And uh, what I have in here is uh, I got four batteries. And uh, they're wired in uh, parallel with um, uh, with coat hangers, and I hook them up, and uh, they power all my extra lighting. And uh, now the wife might think that this is kind of an ugly looking rig, but uh, I got a little surprise for you that, that might even satisfy her, but I doubt it. <laughs> now, what I've done here is I've uh, mounted a European style spoiler on the front, like you see on your Maseratis and Ferraris and Isuzus. <laughs> and what kind of a world would this be without duct tape, I ask you. That's actually just a piece of plywood. I got a C-clamp on there, and uh, I got an old garage door opener here, which is going to raise and lower the whole unit. Talk about sporty. So if you guys want to just throw on your welding goggles at the front there, uh, let's give this rig a try. If that isn't attractive and sporty and stylish all at the same time, then, uh, hey, knock me down and let me get back up again. So it's that easy. You can do it yourself. You got the tools and the know-how. So until next time, remember this. If the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Go 
don't go away. I'm sure you want to hear the end of the haircutting story. Oh, yeah, that's a real nail biter, for sure. Oh. <laughs> it is winter. The moonlight bounces off the icy lake. The street lights bounce off the icy roads. Your car bounces off the icy guardrails. <laughs> Your head bounces off the dashboard. Your check bounces off the brain surgeon's reception desk. So anyway, uh, getting back to this uh, haircut and kit that uh, Moose Thompson had, you know, uh, Stinky Peterson uh, gets his haircut about as often as he washes it, which works out to about once every four years. So the idea of getting a free haircut was pretty appealing to him, even though it meant that uh, several forms of wildlife were going to have to find a new natural habitat. <laughs> so uh, Moose, unfortunately, wasn't interested in shampoo and uh, Stinky's hair, so what he done was he just uh, combed it straight up with a garden rake and then uh, marked the line across using a T-square and a piece of chalk. <laughs> but then when he went to cut it, uh, golly, it uh, broke all the blades in the razor. So this makes Moose pretty mad, plus uh, Stinky's hair is looking like a hedge on drugs. You know, and Stinky wanted his money back, of course, but then he hadn't paid anything, so he said he was willing to take a check. Uncle Red, Uncle Red, look. I've made my video device machine into a time machine. Well, how does that work, Harold? Oh, easy. Watch this. Watch this. Like, I'll set it for five minutes into the future, right? To say, like, when the haircutting story was over, for instance. And then I push a couple buttons. And presto, we're into the future. We're not into the future, Harold. We're just into the next segment. Oh, well, that's good enough. <laughs> Oh, red green. Yeah. This is a surprise. It's a big surprise. Yeah. <laughs> a real life human being. Yeah. Oh, please come in. This is great. This yeah. is great. Wipe your feet there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Ranger Gord, uh, I understand that forest is real, real dry, and uh, we just popped in because I guess the fire, uh, fire danger has got to be up there now, isn't it? Oh, it's very dangerous. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very dry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, it hasn't been this dry uh, since all the time I've been up here. Oh. Yeah. We haven't had rain now for 23 days. Oh, gosh. And even when it did rain 23 days. Ago. It only rained for about two hours. And uh, seven days previous to that, it drizzled for 17, 18 minutes, but nothing of any consequence. Maybe uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, yeah. nothing of any consequence. Yeah. A little yeah. time uh, previous to that, it rained for maybe four or five minutes, but nothing, nothing really of any consequence. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's very, very dry. And all the time I've been up here, uh, I haven't seen it this dry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. made out of wood is shrinking, you know? I'm sensing uh, that, yeah. I have to retune my auto harp every day. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've been uh, working on a medley of hits by the Captain and Tennille. Would you like to hear me play? Uh, well, maybe later, you know, or some other time or something. <laughs> Are they still hot, Captain and Tennille? Well, you have to ask Carol about that. Uh, what I wanted you to do, though, Ranger Gore, if you don't mind, is uh, tell our viewers about some of the dangers of, of your job fire watching. Well, I'd love to, Red. Okay, uh, great. <laughs> well, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, one of the major dangers in watching a fire is that uh, if you watch them too close, you can burn your eyebrows right off. <laughs> so be very careful there. Um, now, and the other thing is, uh, if I didn't have a fire to watch in uh, the 12 years that I've been up here... Oh, no. All right. All right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I didn't realize. 12 years and... I mean, don't you don't you take a vacation, Gord? Can't you can't you take a day off or something in twelve years? No. No. Fire doesn't take a vacation. Right. Fire doesn't take a day off. <laughs> but well, what about in the, what about in the winter? I mean, there's no forest fire in the winter. You know? Don't tell me that, Ray. Don't tell me that I didn't have to spend the last twelve winters freezing to death up here. <laughs> don't tell me that, Ray. Uh, uh, no, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No, I, 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 uh, Lord, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about something else. What about at night? What about at night? And there's a forest fire. Can you see it? How do you tell it? How do you detect it? How can you see it? What do you do? Well, if the uh, flames are big enough, you'd be able to see it, would you? Well, no, no. I meant, you know, if you were asleep. How do you know there's a fire if you're asleep? Sleep? <clears throat> yeah, you know, if you're asleep. What do you mean I could have slept? <laughs> Don't tell me that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay, don't, yeah, don't oh, tell oh, me that, Red! All right, all right. That's okay. The fire doesn't sleep, you know. Okay, no, I understand. I understand. All right, all right. All right, all right take it easy. Take it easy. I have a question for you. A big fire, sure, you're going to see it. What about a small fire? How do you detect a small fire? Oh. 
Oh, okay. Well, um, I've got uh, 400 smoke detectors hung, one per acre all around here. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting. Yeah. Uh... My only problem is, is dense fog. The fog will, uh, will set them off. Oh. Every time there's a dense fog, the whole forest goes. <laughs> Boy, that'd be something to hear, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. All the crickets start mating. I'll just plug in an eight track of the Captain and Tennille and drone it out. Oh, yeah. Do you know that Tony Tennille sings in the same key as a smoke detector? Yeah, I see. <laughs> but, Gord, we got to go. Really good to see you again. Take care of yourself. Oh, no, no, you're not going now. Well, we just have to go. We, we, we don't. Oh. No, Gord, no, Gord, Gord, no. No. I was going to show you my, my bark collection and stuff. Well, we'll just see that another time, all right? Now, you take care of yourself. We'll come back. Oh, that please time. don't no. go. Hey, well, uh, why don't you come back tomorrow? I, I'm, I'm here tomorrow. Oh, all right. Well, you know, uh, say around after 11 o'clock. Uh, oh. Because at 11 o'clock, I'm scheduled to floss. But uh, if you want to come by early, uh, I'll, I'll move it to another day. <laughs> well, well, why don't we just play that by ear, huh? Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like my auto harp, huh? Play it by ear? Oh, you play that by ear, too. Yeah, I okay. could. Uh, would you like to hear uh, Love Will Keep Us Together? Uh, well, that'd be nice, but I think we should wait till the fog rolls in, don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen to the singing toad sing his happy song. At the Copa, Copa Cavana. <laughs> if you don't hear the singing toad, he must have sung too close to the road. Copa Cavana. <laughs> <laughs> This is so excellent. It's mail call time again. And I think this is the best part of the show. You know what? Just gels together like that. That's so great. Eh? Just thought of it off the top of my head and bang. It's all fitting together. This is so great. <laughs> oh, yeah, Harold. I smell an Emmy. Oh, oh. You scared me there, Uncle Red. <laughs> okay, letter number one. Dear Red Green, last year I saw every episode after your show. Then this year we got our TV dial fixed and I've been watching some other shows. <laughs> and they're all talking about the environment. What about you? Well, Harold, uh, one of the biggest uh, problems we face is the destruction of the environment through the use of uh, CFFs or, or F F FC, F C. Well, they're either well, they're called uh, fluorocarbons or uh, or, or carbol carbofluorides. Yeah. What's the name of that stuff they use in the refrigerators? What? Oh, sorry. What? Sorry, I was making up a cartoon in my mind. <laughs> I was talking about uh, refrigeration and what's the name of that stuff they use in there. You know, it's in, it's in your car air conditioner. My car doesn't have an air conditioner. Why not? It's a motorcycle. <laughs> what are they just talking about? Carboforins? Yeah, okay. All right. So what we have to do is we've got to figure out um, a way to make uh, ozone. Oh, how do you do that? Well, ozone is uh, produced whenever there's an electrical short circuit. Uh, remember that time when we dropped the uh, SOS pad into the hairdryer? <laughs> remember that smell? Yeah. Well, that was ozone. Are you sure? I thought that was the kitchen on fire. No, I mean before that. Are you sure? Because I don't think ozone has a smell. Oh, yeah, ozone has a smell. Go sniff the back of the fridge. No, that, no, that, that's flarable coolings. That's like FCF, FCC's Fs. All right, forget that. And what's the name of that stuff they make uh, styrofoam cups out of? Styrofoam. Yeah, well, that has uh, C, F, C, C, F, 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 C, F, C, F, are you sure? I thought that was the plastic hamburger box that had flour coolings in it. No, it's the hamburgers. Are the french fries okay? Are the french fries okay, Uncle Red? Yeah, yeah, they are, Harold. In fact, uh, I think if you eat enough uh, french fries, you actually produce uh, ozone. Are you sure? I remember the smell from the hairdryer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I think we could uh, retitle this segment, uh, Kids Don't Try This at Home. Uh, Bill brought us, uh, as you can see, uh, a snowblower. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's something that's a valuable part of, uh, of our equipment list uh, up here at the Lodge, but uh, it is a piece of heavy equipment, and uh, you should respect it. Uh, the snow goes in there, Bill's giving you the demo here, and it comes out here, you know. I mean, that's clever, isn't it? Uh, I mean, what else would you assume? And never put your hands anywhere... Well, like what I'm doing, never do that, all right, for starters. Speaking of starters, uh, Bill's having a little problem there. Mr. Expert doesn't know you got to turn the thing on first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll drink to that, Bill. Anyway, up she goes.
shows, and uh, we just wanted to show you. Actually, Bill has some interesting ideas uh, how you can adapt a snowblower to, you know, really help you uh, as a tool, uh, and it is kind of interesting. Uh, I think it's just unfortunate that we picked uh, garbage day as the day to, to try and do this. I mean, if you build and pay a little more attention, uh, that wouldn't have hurt either, you know. But uh, you know, they are a powerful machine. <laughs> I uh, got a hint of uh, what we'd had uh, for dinner in the last uh, couple of weeks at the line. I, I think that pork was undercooked. But uh, on we go anyway. What, it, what, what Bill really wanted to show you here was, uh, this is a, something kind of interesting that he thought up. Uh, I didn't completely understand it at first because he, I just saw him tying the rope onto the snowblower and I really was a little bit, uh, you know, well, you can see there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he tied the other end of the rope uh, to a tree. And uh, you know what he's got in mind here is, uh, I think this is something that he may have seen in a cartoon, you know, which uh, he goes to regularly. And the idea is you start the snowblower up and uh, it winds around the tree, you see, and it clears the whole area without you actually having to do any work. So you think that, uh, well, Bill's a bit of a slow learner, you know, with this, there we go. <laughs> So anyway, he gets it going, and the wheels are turning there around, and we engage the thrower, and then uh, now what happens is uh, she's supposed to be uh, winding around uh, around the tree, and uh, of course every time it goes around, uh, the rope winds around the tree and 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 and, and brings it in a little bit closer. You see, <clears throat> now our problem was uh, the knot was just slipping uh, around the tree, so what was happening was the snowblower wasn't wasn't coming any closer, just going over and over in the same circle. So Bill figured if he gave it a tug and tied the knot a little tighter, and I guess I should have paid more attention to what was happening. Because he kind of turned it, and it kind of was well. You can see, well, <clears throat> now this is uh, this is real dangerous. I think uh, maybe it's just me. You know. Oh 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 uh, oh! Bill, that's no, I have Bill's underwear. I don't know it. Oh. For me. Snow he's wearing there, uh, what some guys will do to increase their sperm count. It is winter. The joints stiffen as the cold sets in. The north wind blows ice pellets into your eyes. You wonder at its brutality and pointlessness. Then your mind turns to hockey. <laughs> This is a uh, point in the show where uh, we give Harold a chance to say what's on his mind. Now we got to do something to kill the time. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Huh? Bullies, okay? All right, well, you know who I'm talking about. Those people who beat you up on the way to school and the supermarket and church. <laughs> well, I don't think anybody has the right to use physical violence on another human being. Well, all right, unless, of course, like you're Batman or the police or something, and then it's okay. <laughs> and, and I don't mind being attacked verbally. That's okay. You know, I'm, I really, I'm getting used to that. But I, I got a Walkman, so I don't even notice much anymore. <laughs> but when it resorts to fists, I just have to stop and say, enough. But usually that doesn't help either. <laughs> you know, okay, all right, yes. I, when I get punched by some moron, I can resort to, like, immature tactics as well, like punch him back or something, or I could be mature about it and crumble into a moaning heap. <laughs> and then I go home and I plot against them, like ordering 80 pizzas to their house. <laughs> so you have to do that. You got to use your brains, or otherwise you've sunk to their level. And they're going to win, because they got huge ham-shaped fists. <laughs> but those hands are no match for this. Head lice. We have lots more coming up for you, not, not just the haircutting story. Oh, thank God. <laughs> We're up here at Jimmy McVeigh's house. Uh, Jimmy's not home from work yet. Uh, I guess they had a heavy day at the post office. I'm going to come up here and see how Jimmy's doing with his old uh, wooden boat he's uh, fixing up. Oh, here comes Jimmy now. How'd you go today, Jim? Oh, jeez, what a bloody day. What happened? The bloody bag weighs tons. Can oh. you imagine all the bloody letters that they have us taking around this country? Well, yeah, Jim, you're, you're a letter carrier, you know. That's not the letters, you know. 
It's the magazines. The damn magazines must weigh 60 pounds. Oh, I mean, can you imagine swinging a bag like that on your shoulder while you're claiming a fence with a pit bull tearing the arse of your trousers? <laughs> that is what I call stress in the workplace. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, don't worry about that now. You can think about your boat. Oh, my God, Red, you're right. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't she a beauty? Well, she will be someday, maybe. <laughs> well, look at the rings. Look, yeah. look at the craftsmanship. Yeah. I can nearly smell the sea, can't you? Yeah, it's more like a big mushroom, really, Jim. <laughs> She's absolutely beautiful. You'll never see a fiberglass boot looking like that, will you? No, that's not for sure. <laughs> how, long, uh, how long have you been working on her, uh, Jim? Oh, well, you know, not that long. No, no, no. no, no. About uh, six and a half years or so. <laughs> well, yeah, I do take a weekend off once a year. Yeah. Just to go to the boat show. Oh. <laughs> You got to spend time with the missus. No, I do not. Oh? No, she's bloody well gone. Oh my she's God. away. She's left. She got left, yeah. She did. She done a bunk. Oh. <laughs> it was a surprise to me no too. No kidding. I went and I went into the house there just yeah. to get a coat hanger, you know, yeah. to make a hose clamp for the engine. Yeah, yeah. And to my amazement, I noticed all her clothes were gone. No, no, no nothing. <laughs> now there is what you call loving support, isn't it? Well, I think you're kind of to blame too, Jim. I mean, you've, you've got to spend some time with a little lady, you know. It's not like I didn't spend some time with her. Oh, Man, dear. Yeah. I mean, I had her up in that boat once to help me lift the engine out. Oh, yeah. She was bloody useless. <laughs> well, it's too bad anyway, you know. It a, is. Yeah, it's a shame. It is. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a tragedy. Yeah. I mean, I could have had that boat in the bloody water by now. <laughs> kind of eventually uh, worked itself out. Uh, uh, he got a little bit better at it anyway. I mean, the injury rate certainly went down when he stopped doing the sides and the back and just concentrated on, on doing the tops uh, of the heads. Probably the, the worst job Moose did was when he cut his own hair. You know, he set up a bunch of mirrors and he had the razor and some barbecue tongs there. And, you know, I never knew that Moose's scalp was pink. But uh, we learned something, though. You know, we learned that everything has its place. Mine is here. Harold's is over there, and uh, Moose's Barber Kits is at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> so anyway, my wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home, and I'm fine, but I, I'll be wearing my hat for the next six weeks or so. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching the show, and uh, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang here at the lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>